Well, uh, good afternoon, Nigel. Thanks very much for sparing some time to come along to talk to us on the uh, the fever stand. So, um, how's the revival gone for you so far? Well, I have to say I've had a fantastic revival because uh, the Freddie March race, I managed second in my C-Type Jag. So, you know, much as much as to my surprise, it really was. Yeah, ter- terrific result. Well, well done. Now, you're, you're obviously well known for your uh, expertise at the wheel of, of Jaguars. And I understand that you did the Paris to Peking, sorry, Peking to Paris rally. Was that was that also in a Jaguar? Is that, is that age eligible for, for for that event? Yes, indeed. Um, you were you were allowed to go up to I think it was 1997, and I think the cutoff was 80, and then think. Uh, but um, I did it in a Mark 7 Jaguar. I was contacted by a, a very wealthy gentleman who. Um, wanted to do it out of the blue we were semi friends from club racing and stuff and very wealthy man and he said uh, would you do it with me and i said yes but only in a jaguar so who, who was driving and who was navigating or did you did you alternate well that was interesting you are supposed to um you are supposed to swap it round but um, it did prove that um, it really wasn't for him, the driving. And uh, I ended up doing the 10,000 miles myself in um, 42 days. And, and how was his navigation? He kept you on track, did he? Yeah, his navigation w- was pretty good because I was in aviation and I was able to get some maps of China, spy maps actually. <laughs> And um, we were able to semi-plot because there were no signs. You just knew you were going northeast or southwest or whatever. And um, we did pretty good. Uh, yes. Yeah, f- fantastic. Because you're you're also um, well known for your collection of uh, Mike Hawthorne and Jaguar-related cars and, uh, and memorabilia. Are you are you still building the collection, or is it where where, where you want it? Oh, it is where where I want it. I mean, I'm awfully pleased to still find a trinket. And I have to be sadly honest that uh, we're obviously at the age group now that are passing away that were probably as close to, to Mike or most certainly their era. And I do get occasionally the odd thing that comes up uh, that, you know, either associated to him or even, even was his or given to somebody, you know, that you get that sort of thing. And that, of course, that's, that's Christmas for me. You know. So you, you mentioned the age uh, barrier, as, as, as it were, and it is a concern to FIFA that the older generation, our kind of generation, obviously have this interest and passion in, in classic cars, but maybe the younger generation, maybe maybe not so much. How, how, how do you see preservation of, of uh, older vehicles pl- playing out over the next couple of decades? I see that as a major problem, absolutely major problem. I have a nice collection of Jaguars, and I even own an SS100, and I tried to get my... Um, younger family you know to to drive it in their 40s and it's just going to be frightfully difficult for them to handle the gearbox which i guess you know what i'm talking about the brakes are fine uh, but the lighting's frightful of course not that you should really drive those things in in the dark anyway but um i do fear and i like to see but everything costs money as we well know if only that kids could go to what I used to call a disused airfield, you know, and be allowed at the age 10, 12, whatever they were, you know, competent to try and learn to use a clutch and change gear and so on. I'm teaching my uh, 10 year old uh, granddaughter to um, use a, uh, a, a car on my farm because I don't want her, I don't want her to, um, have uh, an automatic to start with. That's the kiss of death. Yes, yeah, an interesting idea to start people young and get them driving on uh, on, on private land because we're sort of gathering up ideas from people as to you know how, how do we engage the next generation and try to keep the whole preservation and, and classic car thing going. And obviously that's, a, that's 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 an interesting idea, Nigel, getting them driving on private land. Yeah, indeed. And of course, you know, somewhere wonderful like Brooklyn's so would have so much red tape from the deadbeats and the do-gooders and so on, they could never do it. But it would have been perfect if, if Brooklyn's could have I mean, safely brought younger children and said, do, you know, the parents agree, and if the children wanted to do it, 
Um, well, of course, they, they do have some early driver experiences here at Goodwood, I think, so maybe that's something Brooklands can learn from. It's certainly an idea that I'll, uh, I'll take back to Brooklands, Nigel. So thank you very much. So thanks, great chatting to you. Thanks very much for giving up some time for, uh, for FIVA this afternoon. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure.